So today is actually a very interesting day on my Facebook feed. Um, you know how it shows, you know, four years ago, this is what happened. There was actually a photo of me posing for a body positivity campaign. And on my legs, I had written the words, Harry is a new sexy. And it's so weird to think four years ago, that's where I was at with my hair, with my identity, with um, what I thought was beautiful. And it's got me thinking about the last couple of years, ever since high school, um, my relationship with my hair, and I guess where, where, what I'm feeling about hair right now in 2018. So that was me sitting in Perth, um, this isolated country that I live in, an isolated city, and not knowing if there were other hairy girls out there. And then I started traveling around the world and actually meeting other young girls and being in swimming pools with other hairy, you know, young people. And whether they're seek or not, I think that's when I was like, ooh, this is a solidarity thing. How, how important is hair to you as a woman? Um, and secondly, if it's preventing you like I think that a lot of people, um, when they talk about facial hair especially, um, they always ask me, they're like, oh, so gee, you know, what, um, what would you do if you had a daughter and she had facial hair and she was getting really depressed about it and she came home from school and she didn't want to go to school or she wanted to do something about it, what would you do? And to be honest, because I've never experienced that hormonal imbalance, I've never experienced having, like I've got a mustache, but I haven't got, you know, a beard or anything. So I actually don't know how that feels. But I personally think that if I had a daughter that was 100% comfortable with everything going on on her body, I would be like, hell yeah, I'm supporting you. And I will be there for you if you get bullied or if people on the street say stuff, I'm there for you. But if I had a girl that was getting really depressed and suicidal and just fully down about this and it was stopping her from even just getting on with daily activities or getting on with life, then yeah, let's do something about that because that's not what our gurus wanted. Our gurus wanted, in my opinion, to actually get on with life not to, you know, even when we think of marriage, um, I was talking about this last night and I was thinking, you know, is it the Sikh way? Um, you know, we always go to the guru for answers for all these um, stages of our life, right? And it's interesting that when, when it comes to marriage and when it comes to um, all these things that are dragging our community down, it's to do with the culture. So yeah, it is, you know, when I go to India, when I go to Delhi and I'm in a beauty salon because I'm getting pushed in to get my makeup done for some wedding and the, the salon owner is a core, the salon owner is a core and she's telling me that's really unhygienic. That's really disgusting. Why aren't you doing something about that? So it's really fascinating that all these little experiences and they haven't come from, you know, my immediate family telling me, oh, you know, do this or don't do this. They actually gave me that room to grow. So that's the biggest thing I tell parents. Like if you want your child, if you want your daughter or son to grow up to be the most fully seek individuals in the world, why don't you just give them that room to explore, that room to figure it out themselves? Because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are actually going to go out there and continue the legacy. It's not going to be their parents holding their hand. And certainly when it comes to, you know, dealing with your body, what does Siki say about self-esteem and body positivity? All this new, all these new campaigns. You know, I've been part of all the campaigns when it comes to being the token hairy girl. But what's one thing that I've found is that I knew what body positivity was from the day I was born. And that was through the scriptures and the Kirtan and the Gurbani that we read. But now it's being talked about and it's being rebranded as this new phenomenon when really I think I'm so lucky that I was taught this from a very young age and that's what's given me the confidence to actually, you know, remove all that negativity of, you know, every, you know, every day freaking out that someone on the street's going to be pointing and laughing at my underarm hair or my, or my leg hair or when I go to the beach, someone's going to say something and humiliate me and all those like, you know, paranoid thoughts, they've actually been dealt with. I've dealt with that. It, you know, when I was in high school and now I've got room in my brain. I've actually got so much room in my brain to actually do the things that I want to do and go and like conquer. I think that's what I hate about 
talking about body image is that it drags you down and it takes the attention away from all the things you need to get done in this world and your purpose in life. So that's why I do get frustrated when people still um, are calling me to be the, oh, you know, what's it like being hairy? It's like, well, what's it like having eyes and nose and ears and a brain? Like, that's pretty obvious. Like it's, I don't know, it's there. It grows, it's there, it's going to keep growing. And I can't, I can do stuff about it if I want to, but I don't really want to. And I think depending on the day as a woman, it's okay to have, I think it's okay to have a different um, sort of feeling towards it. I think that for me, sometimes I'm like my answer when people ask me, why don't you remove your hair? It's because I'm lazy. Second of all, because that's the way I was created and that's kind of what, how I want to roll with things, the own natural. And then thirdly, because every time I look at my leg hair or I notice my armpit hair in the mirror or in a photo or when I'm tagged in something, it reminds me that next time I am disappointed or annoyed at something else in my body that I don't like, whether it's my love handles or my big nose or my eyebrows, I go, hang on, didn't you go through like six years of your life conquering this this battle between you and your hair you've been through that so that actually represents everything else that actually represents something much bigger than just these little follicles it's actually it's way bigger than that it's actually just thinking about full acceptance and freedom i'm still not there yet when it comes to many areas of my life but i know when it when it comes to hair when it comes to body hair especially I feel pretty confident that if a hundred people right now lined up outside my house, and I say this every time I you know, do a youth camp or we do a little workshop or a speech about body and hair and sicky or whatever, I always tell people that if a hundred people lined up right now and said to me, you are disgusting, you are ugly, you are unhygienic, you're never going to get married, you are not worthy of love, no one should look at you, you should delete your Facebook profile because you're so disgusting. I think I could still walk out of that experience knowing that I'm sorry, that's your opinion, not mine. That's actually how you feel about me. And that's great. You should have your opinion. Keep having your opinion. But I know how I see myself and I know that I'm a beautiful human being and I know what I'm capable of. So I think I wish every young person, especially young women nowadays in the current climate that we are in, in this interesting world, um, I hope that they also leave their houses every day knowing that Mate, those hundred people can line up and they can say whatever they want, but it's, it's up to me to say the things I want to say in the mirror every morning.